Welcome back into Duff and Friends. Now I am joined by Stephanie Miller in Terre Haute, Indiana. Now Stephanie makes all natural dog and cat treats and we're talking to her today about couples who prefer to have pets instead of children in their lives. Now Stephanie, why do you think some couples like to choose pets over kids? I think right now a lot of it is because of the economy. Um, it's cheaper to have a pet than it is to raise a child. Um, a child's going to run you about $15,000 a year when a pet, you know, it may be around 1000 you might be able to do it a little bit cheaper depending on if you're feeding them a holistic diet or if they have a lot of medical issues or something like that. Um, you know, some some young couples just don't feel ready um, to have a child yet. They they don't think that you have to get married like in your, in your early 20s and right away reproduce. How often do you hear from people that like to go that route? Um, a lot more often than I used to. When I started the business about six years ago, I saw more families that, you know, their dog or their cat was their pet. And then recently, it seems like in the last year or so, I have a lot more younger couples that are my customers. And their their pets are their children. Um, they they don't have any, any kids and, and they spoil their pets as much as they would a, a child. So I think it's becoming um, a more popular choice. And I think you probably see it more in larger cities and it's just now starting to come into the smaller, more rural areas, but it's an accessible thing. And what are some of the reasons they give you for choosing puppies over babies? Um, most of the time it's, you know, finances and stuff. It's it's cheaper to, to spoil a dog than it is a kid. Um, sometimes they, you know, they don't want to leave a child at home. They don't want to have to find a sitter. They don't want to have to burden a family member with, you know, watching their child while they travel or enjoy the world or if they have to work late they don't want that extra guilt and with a pet you don't necessarily have that it's okay to you know kennel your dog while you're at work you can't lock up your child you know while you're at work even though some people you know do <laughs> even though it's not right um you know it's, it's they i think people are more concerned about doing what's right and they don't want to risk raising a child the wrong way so a pet's a lot easier, I think, for, for somebody to raise, but yet still give that nurturing side, you know, the nourishment that it needs to. You told me a little while ago that you yourself have three dogs and you consider them to be your babies. I do. Um, my three dogs are, are definitely the replacements for kids. Um, they have sweaters and Halloween costumes and pictures all over the house. I've had portraits of them drawn. Um, my business is named after the the oldest one. So, yeah, they, they are my children. I look at them as my four-legged children and spoil them everywhere I go on vacation. I, I bring them back, you know, treats or toys and probably spend more money on them than I do myself. But I love them, you know, all equally, and they're, they're just great dogs. Would you say that, would, that they were easier to train than, say, an infant or a little, small child? Well, it's nice because, it, to me... I felt like I could, you know, potty train them quickly. Um, you can use a kennel to train them or crate train them. You can't do that with a child. Um, they don't talk back, which is nice. Um, you know, to me, it was just an easier thing to work with. It works with my schedule as well. Um, I I don't have the time right now, you know, to, to raise a child and work a full-time job and then run the dog treat business on the side. So, you know, it was, it was quite convenient and it's, you know, I don't have to worry about changing diapers. You you run the dogs out. They are on a time schedule. I mean, they know exactly when they are used to going out. They know when their dinner is and they have my bedtime schedule down as well. So there there's some things that are similar to raising a child, I guess, in that case. But yeah, in my in my mind, it's easier. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you got a crystal ball here or not, but say five years from now, are you still planning to use the pooper scooper over changing diapers? Well, I would like to have both. Um, I'll be 37 in five years if I look down the road that far, and dogs have always been part of my life, and I couldn't imagine not having them, but I would love to have a child. And, you know, I want them to be exposed to, you know, cats and dogs and, and that richness that it brings to your life. And it's important, I think, think that, you know, you have to create that balance as well. And I think that's something I'll be ready for, you know, both financially and mentally that, you know, the dog is not going to get thrown outside and put on a chain. I mean, they're going to be loved just as equally as the kid is.
Now, I was doing my homework before we did this interview today. You know me, I'm a stickler for details. And one of the things I found out that uh, why people are kind of opposed to this concept is they say things like uh, people who prefer pets over children are kind of being selfish. And they feel that, you know, having that love for your pet, uh, it could easily transform into love for their children. But they're opting not to have those kids. Now, how do you respond to those comments from that side of the crowd? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm selfish at all. I mean, some people are just not meant to be parents, you know, and good for them if they can recognize that. Um, you know, it's it's not selfish if they want to travel and see the world or, like, in my case, I went back and got my master's degree, and, you know, I wouldn't have necessarily had time to have a baby and to have the, the full-time job and the business on the side and, and all that, but with the dogs, it's it's manageable. And it's not a selfish act if you go and adopt a pet. I mean, that's pretty giving and, you know, you can't please everybody. So you're always going to have a critic, I guess. Exactly. Now, you were telling me earlier today that uh, if these couples happen to go the divorce route, if things don't work out and they end up going their separate ways, sometimes a dog, just like a child, can get caught right in the middle of that. Yeah. And unfortunately, I have firsthand experience with that. Um, when me and my now ex-husband divorced, we worked out a plan um, to have basically dog custody. And so we share, um, he takes two of the three dogs because one of the dogs doesn't get along with him. And we set up an arrangement where, you know, he lets me know about a week in advance. And then he comes and gets the dogs or I drop them off at his house. And it's just, you know, it's just like child custody. But lucky for us, we worked it out quite easily. But there's several couples, you know, that that doesn't happen and there's huge you know court cases that you know they are looked at as a child and people will take legal action to try and get that dog because they feel that it is their child um there's also been some cases lately of you know the husband and wife get a divorce and the wife takes off with the dog across the country and you know then it, it becomes a legal issue of well, is it still the property? You know, this person feels like it's their child, but yet it's property in this, the eyes of the state. So it's it's uh, it's added an interesting legal issue um, to a lot of people's lives that they may not think about. Um, also, there's another legal side of it too. Is if something happens to you, a lot of people are also writing um, their pets into their wills and leaving their fortunes to their pets. And uh, and there's also you know the procedures of you know who's going to take care of your pet if something does happen. So there's a lot of new legal aspects that are coming along with uh, this pet ownership that's becoming more of a four-legged child, I guess you could say. And how do you feel that your dog felt about that situation? Uh, did you kind of get a sense that you know he may have been uncomfortable going back and forth like that? Um, I think it was actually a pretty easy thing for us because we didn't. We both love the dogs equally, and we didn't want to have, you know, the dogs have to suffer, you know, and it's not really that it affects us having to share them. It, it was more of a case of, you know, we didn't want them to, you know, feel like they were forgotten or neglected, I guess, in a way, and the, we both still love them, so... We're talking with Stephanie Miller in Terre Haute, Indiana. She has her own little side business where she's making all-natural dog and cat treats. Now, that's a a far cry from what you were doing when you and I worked together in television back in Terre Haute. How did you get into that? It is. um, It actually started off um, when I married my ex-husband. I didn't have money for Christmas for them, so I made them as gifts for our family and... uh, we have a lot of pet lovers in our families, and that's how it kind of started. I used some base recipes on that. Um, that was in 2008, and that's when the pet food scare really started to hit the airwaves, and people became concerned about what was going into their pets' bodies, and my friends and family started asking me to make these treats for them, and I was like, I can't give them away for free. So I started the business and developed about 10 of my own recipes, and it's just taken off from there. And I, I started off as an internet based and then started doing some festivals and a farmer's market. And now I'm in some shops and some vets offices. So it's, it's continuously growing and it's, it's become an amazing business. Well, let's see if we can't get a few people to buy into that. Where can they go to find your dog and cat treats at? Uh, people can go to my website. It's HallieHoundBarkery.com. They can also look us up on Facebook. Um, if you are in the Terre Haute area, um, we're at Reminiscence Antiques, um, Brown Veterinary Hospital, and the Season Wick over in Brazil. And we also do the Farmer's Market and then the 
famous Cover Bridge Festival in October. We have a booth in Bridgeton, so um, we're kind of all over, and we, we keep growing and doing all kinds of little festivals. And you can also get that information on the Duff and Friends Facebook group page. Stephanie Miller, thank you so much for joining us on the Friend Zone. 